What is the true cost in blood on the battlefield to Russia of Vladimir Putin's decision to invade Ukraine? Well, a BBC investigation alongside the independent Russian website Mediazona reveals that more than 50,000 Russian soldiers have died so far in the war. The official Kremlin figure is much lower. In truth, the dead on both sides pile up. Overnight, a Russian missile attack killed several people in the northern Ukrainian city of Chernihiv. More than 70 others were injured. Meanwhile, President Zelensky has again called for Ukraine to get the same international military support as Israel. Lawmakers in America have now confirmed they'll soon be voting on a massive aid package. More on Russia's dead in a moment, but first, James Waterhouse is live in Kyiv for us tonight. James. Clive, there is nothing new about Russia launching widespread missile attacks on Ukraine. But there are, for Kyiv, some disturbing familiarities, where Moscow is once again targeting the country's energy infrastructure, and it's also looking to overwhelm Ukrainian air defences with massive missile and drone attacks. There are also differences as well in terms of how Ukraine is able to defend itself. After a missile attack today in the city of Chernihiv, President Zelensky doesn't just see it as a devastating strike, but a symbol of depleting Western support. Bus passengers die for cover after two missiles hit nearby. What follows is the haunting sound of a third. In Chernihiv, airstrikes happen with little notice. Russia tried and failed to take this city. But with its border only 60 miles away, the skies bring a constant threat. The force of the blast did this to Anastasia's home. It will be very cold to spend the night here. I have two children, so we'll go to the neighbors. And then we'll repair this. But I don't know if it makes sense at this stage of our lives. A familiar recovery routine followed. For Ukrainians, there is no escaping Russia's invasion. And after watching Western allies unite behind Israel, their leader wants the same for his country. Allies have shown in the Middle East what they can really do when there is enough determination. Ukraine is increasingly fighting this war on its own. Its chances of victory have become more remote. And instead of planning to liberate all of its territory, Kyiv is calculating how much of it could be conceded to Russia. President Zelensky is being more frank about the chances of losing in an attempt to restore a much needed sense of urgency. NATO is continuing to posture with sea and air drills along its Eastern European flank. Its members are still promising military aid. We just had an important uh, and timely discussion on how to step up further our support to Ukraine, in particular on how to provide more air defence systems to Ukraine. Because the situation on the battlefield remains very difficult, and we have all heard uh, Ukraine's clear and urgent appeal for more uh, support. What Kyiv is really hoping for is a £49 billion package to be signed off in the US Congress. After months of delay, that's set to be voted on this weekend. If it passes, Ukraine might do more than hold on. If it doesn't, the talk may shift to compromise or defeat. James Waterhouse, BBC News, Kyiv. Well, there's always been global scepticism of the official count of Russia's war dead given by the Kremlin, with independent analysis suggesting the figure is much higher. One obvious marker of the growing numbers killed is the changing state of Russia's cemeteries. Like this one in a city south of Moscow, pictured here four months before the outbreak of war in October 2021. And this, the same burial ground 18 months later. Today, the Kremlin responded to the BBC's investigation into the numbers of war dead and neither confirmed or denied our reporting that at least 50,000 troops have died. Officials say they're bound by laws on state secrets. Olga Ifshina has that story. In Russia, the number of war graves is growing fast. 5th of November, 
9th of November. Listing the dates of death, volunteers have sent us this video from the city of Vladivostok. And here is the same cemetery from above. In the last two years, it has grown twice in size. A pattern seen in graveyards all over Russia. Since the start of the invasion, the BBC and its partners have been verifying photos of graves, social media posts and news articles to track down the number of Russians killed fighting in Ukraine. So far, we have verified 50,000 names. Our data shows that Russia has lost 23% more troops in the second year of invasion compared to the first. This increase reflects a shift in tactics. At first, Russia relied on its professional soldiers deployed to carry out complex operations. But since January 2023, Russia began sending thousands of inexperienced troops forward in waves to weaken Ukrainian positions and expose their location to Russian artillery. Soldiers themselves call it the meat grinder. The Russians are now able to bring a lot more firepower to bear against Ukrainian positions when they go into the offensive. As long as the Ukrainians are unable to shift that balance of firepower, the meat grinder tactics will very likely continue to be quite successful in, in taking limited uh, areas of ground across the front. Prisoners recruited and sent to war have been crucial to these tactics. In return for six months on the front line, they were promised freedom if they survived. We have tracked down more than 1,000 Russian inmates from the day they signed up till the day they died. Of that number, more than half the prisoners were killed within just 12 weeks of arriving at the front line. Whilst our count only includes deaths recorded publicly, Data from cemeteries across Russia suggests the true figure is likely to be twice as high. And as Russian forces continue to push on, pictures of new graves keep coming every day. Olga Ivshina, BBC News.